morning and welcome to our morning worship on this Palm Sunday where today we think about Jesus and the triumphant entry into Jerusalem just five days before his crucifixion. I'm glad that you've joined with us for this service. This morning we're using Morning Prayer 2 from the Book of Common Prayer. You can find it on page 101 of your prayer books or on page 37 of the large print edition or alternatively, you can download the service sheets which we've put on our Facebook page a little earlier this morning. Let me encourage you that whether you're sitting alone or with your family to join in in the singing of the hymns. Uh, this morning we're using hymn 238, uh, Right On, Right On in Majesty, and working our way through that hymn. And also join in in the responses uh, to our prayers and throughout the liturgy, the parts that are typed in bold. Uh, please join together with us for that as even though we're not in the one building to worship God, we're all in our different homes, that we are still church. We are still very much the body of Christ who have met together for praise and for worship. Just uh, a couple of announcements for the coming week or so. Tonight at seven o'clock we, in the will of the Lord, will be streaming live our evening service on our Facebook page. Please tune in for that. And also throughout this week at half past seven, beginning tomorrow evening, that's Monday, we will have a service every evening for uh, Holy Week. Uh, please keep an eye on our Facebook page for updates concerning that and join us for those acts of worship as we pilgrim together to Good Friday and then ultimately on to Easter Sunday to the day of resurrection. I'm delighted that you've joined with us. Please enjoy our worship and may we all be blessed together as we praise God and as we hear his word proclaimed. And so we sing the first verse of hymn 238, Right On, Right On in Majesty. <laughs> Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit, we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And we'll do exactly that in the words of our psalm for this morning. Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 19 to 29, which can be found on page 730 of the prayer book or on the service sheet. Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 19 to 29, on page 730 of the prayer book. 
I invite you to say this with me in alternate half verses. Beginning at verse one. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Continuing at verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords, right to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Two parishioners have very kindly agreed to bring us our readings from Holy Scripture, and we will continue to sing our hymn between our two readings. This reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. In your life together, think the way Jesus Christ thought. He was like God in every way, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to use to his benefit. Instead, he gave up everything, even his place with God. He accepted his role of servant, appearing in human form. During his life as a man, he humbled himself by being fully obedient to God, even when that caused his death, death on a cross. So God gave Jesus the place of highest honour, and he gave him the name that is greater than any other. So every person will bow down be before Jesus to honour the name God gave him. Everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth will bow. They will all confess, Jesus Christ is Lord, and this will bring glory to God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. taken from Matthew chapter 21, uh, beginning at verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there and with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, Tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Said to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. 
In response to our readings from Holy Scripture, we proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 112 of the prayer book or on the printed service sheet. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Sixth Sunday in Lent, Palm Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lenten Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins, and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the second morning collect on page 114 of the prayer book. It is also printed on the service sheet. The second morning collect on page 114. O Lord, O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Chris. And now we have our intercessions and the response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself and became as nothing for our redemption. Give to your church the servant mind to display your grace and mercy. Help your church to be active throughout this world in the proclamation of the gospel. Help us to meet people at their point of need and to be active in all that you call us to do. As we begin our pilgrimage through this Holy Week, help us to journey with the path that leads to everlasting life. Give us a fresh boldness to bow the knee and confess your name. We pray for your church throughout this world. 
and especially the church in this land. We pray for Archbishop-elect John as he prepares to move to Armagh later this month. We pray for the Diocese of Connor and we pray especially for Bishop-elect George. We ask you to be with him as he prepares for his consecration. Lord, may your church be faithful in all that we do. We pray for this parish, for every home and family in it. We pray for all who join us through the mediums of social media and ask that you would bless us in our worship together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, the crowd shouted praises, but just five days later, their shouts of adoration turned to shouts of hatred and for death. We pray, Lord, for all who this day are persecuted because of their faith. We pray for the church throughout the world that find it hard to meet for acts of public worship or to share publicly their faith. We pray for the organisations which help them and ask for your blessing to be upon those mission organisations. Lord, we pray for the governments of the world. As we think later this week of how Pontius Pilate had to sit on the judgment seat, we pray, Lord, for those who lead our nations. We ask that your spirit would guide them, that you would fill them with wisdom and knowledge, that the steps which they take would be the right ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, the crowd spread their cloaks on the ground and waved branches in your honour. Help us to live lives worthy of your honour, to proclaim to those who don't yet know you the knowledge of your love. We pray, Lord, for those who are giving of their lives at this time in frontline workers. We pray, Lord, for the NHS, for those working in our hospitals and medical centres. We pray, Lord, for those whose work takes them to places that could put them in danger. We pray for our armed forces, for the police service. We pray, Lord, for those who are involved in the retail industry and helping to ensure that there is food on the shelves of shops for us, for our daily necessities. We pray for those who work in factories, for those in the transport industry, for those for whom it is necessary to leave home as they come under the, the theme of essential workers. Lord, bless all who are involved. We pray for our teachers, for educators. We pray for funeral directors. Pray for clergy. And ask, Lord, that you would give us all the strength and the knowledge that we need in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, in your passion we see our human frailty. Be with all whose endurance is, is strained and spirit is weakened by their ailments. We pray, Lord, for those who are ill, at home or in hospital. We pray for those who have been affected by COVID-19, for those who are struggling to breathe, for those who have high temperatures, for those who are showing other symptoms, Lord, we ask that your healing hand would rest upon them. We pray for those who have been bereaved, for those who are sad, for those who are lonely. We ask that your comforting spirit would be upon them in these days. And Lord, we bring before you in the stillness of our hearts those for whom we long to pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of stillness and quietness, we bring before God our own particular prayers and requests, our own petitions. We lay them at his throne of grace.
Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come on to thee. And let us join together in the words of the grace. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And now we join together in the singing of our hymn, hymn 238, verse 3 of Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. we pray that you come in the abundant power of your Holy Spirit, that you sweep through into our hearts and our minds, that our eyes would be open to see you, our ears open to hear you, and our hearts open to receive you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I said at the very start of our service this morning, Today is Palm Sunday. It's the day whenever we remember how Jesus came into Jerusalem as king and how he entered it on the back of a donkey. If you have a Bible near you and you want to follow this passage with us, you'll find it in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 21. I want to thank both our readers this morning. I want to thank Sam for reading to us from Philippians and John George for reading to us from Matthew chapter 21. So please look it up and follow it through with me as we journey together through the passage. This being Palm Sunday would be the day when normally we give out little palm crosses as people are leaving church and that's not uh, going to happen today for, for obvious reasons. We did this morning in the children's slot uh, try to show the children how to make a little cross at home using two pieces of paper uh, but the palm crosses are in church and they will be there for whenever we get back and you'll be able to get one uh, then. There's a question in this passage that I want us to really focus on today. And it comes to us in verse 10. And it says this in verse 10 of Matthew chapter 21. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Who is this? What sort of a question is that for us all? I remember as a child playing with my cousins a game called Guess Who? And it really was two board games, uh, or two boards in the game, and both of them had pictures of people on them. And you had to select one and that was your main card. And then questions were asked, and one by one, through a process of elimination, you would work out who it was was left standing, really. You had to guess who the person was. So you'd have asked questions like, does the person wear glasses? And if the answer was no, then you would put down all the cards that had people wearing glasses. Then you would maybe ask, is the person got black hair? And then you would put down all the people with black hair and work it out that sort of a way, process of elimination. Guess who? Who is this? But that's not really the question that's being asked here. People could see who Jesus was. They would have known the stories about him. They would have understood all that was foretold about him uh, because of the, the miracles that he had been performing for three years. Remember, his first miracle was wrought in Cana of Galilee when he turned the water into the wine. And so all those stories would have been circulating uh, throughout the whole of what we know as modern day Israel. And so people would have been aware that Jesus was, even as is said in verse 11, a prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. But to us he's more than that. And this passage has more significance for us in it. And I want us to think about that just for the next few moments. I want us to think about three separate things. I want us to think about the disciples and their response. I want us to think about the donkey. And I want us to think about the crowds uh, in general. But in the back of it all, keeping in our mind that question, who is this? Look with me at verse, at verse 2 of chapter 21. Jesus had just 
uh, come over the Mount of Olives. He was at Bethpage and he said to his disciples this. He sent two of them and he said to them this. Go to the village ahead of you at once. You'll find a donkey tied there with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. The disciples, you know, going by Matthew, and this event is recorded in all four of the Gospels. According to Matthew, the disciples didn't question this at all. That they just did exactly what Jesus wanted them to do. And why would they not? Because they've been following him for, for three years. We don't know who the disciples were. It doesn't matter who they were. What the important thing is, they did exactly what Jesus told them to do. And for us, we need to be the same. If we claim to be Jesus' disciples, then we need to obey him without question. We think of what Jesus says the mark of a disciple is. He said, by this all men shall know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Last Sunday morning, the Reverend Chris finished our series on the fruit of the Spirit. And the first of the fruit that we looked at, or the first segment of the fruit, was that of love. What it means to love each other. Love is vital. Love is an important trait of the, uh, of the Christian life. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us there's faith, hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. We must all show love in our lives. And that's how we know that we're Jesus' disciples. And we must obey what he tells us to do. These disciples obeyed Jesus. They didn't do uh, the opposite to what he said. They did exactly to, as what he said. And we're told in verse 6 that they went and did all that Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt. They did what Jesus wanted them to do. And the trait of a Christian is to do what Jesus wants us to do. But in order to do that, we need to first of all know Jesus. We need to have him in our lives. We need to embrace all that he teaches us and all that he gives us. We need to do all that he tells us to do. And the only way to know that is by reading his word, by spending time in his word. The second thing that we see is the donkey. I'm always amazed by this little passage about the donkey. And as I've said, it's recorded in all four of the Gospels. And how that the disciples went and they brought the donkey to Jesus. The donkey never would have met Jesus before. The donkey never would have encountered perhaps large crowds like there were at this moment in Jerusalem. And of course, don't forget that people were on that pilgrimage to Jerusalem because it was Passover. It was a sacred time of the year. So there were lots and lots of people about. But they brought the donkey. We're told in verse 7, they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their coat their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. In other words, they made a little bit of a saddle for him uh, to, to be in the back of the donkey. Another one of the Gospels tells us that this donkey had never ever been sat on. It had never been ridden before. And so just imagine that. And here Jesus is sitting on this donkey and it so tamely and gently walks down the slopes of the Mount of Olives towards the Kidron Valley and up towards Jerusalem. Jesus did this and the donkey obeyed. The donkey walked the way. We need to, as believers, walk the way. We all know that saying that says that we can be as stubborn as a mule. And we a little bit, are a little bit like donkeys in that we can be stubborn at times and choose to go our own ways and choose not to, to do the things that Jesus wants us to do because we think we know better. But actually, we need to be like the donkey and just submit to Christ. To sit under his authority and all that he stands for. To believe him and to follow him with our whole lives. So the disciples obeyed without questioning. And the donkey walked the way that it needed to walk. And we need to walk that way as well. And then thirdly, the people praised and testified to what was going on. Read with me from verse 9. It says that the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When they entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet 
from Nazareth in Galilee. So who is this? This is Jesus. He is the Messiah, the Son of God. He is the Saviour. And the mere fact of what they are shouting points us to that. I would love to have time this morning to go into all the prophecy behind this passage, looking at what's said in, in Zechariah and in the Psalms, but we just don't have time to do that. But look at what is said. Hosanna to the son of David. Da uh, Jesus was of David's line. But the word Hosanna itself, when brought out of Hebrew, it's, a, it's an expression of the word save. Hosanna basically means to save. And that's what Jesus' purpose was. He came to Jerusalem to die to save us from our sins. So the mere fact that the pilgrims that were there for the Passover festival were shouting at the top of their voices, Hosanna to Jesus, was acknowledging the purpose for which he would come, to save people from their sins. But those same voices who that day were shouting praises about Jesus, five days later were standing shouting different types of sentences. They were shouting, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. They wanted him dead. And whether that was because they honestly believed it themselves or because they were being stirred up by the, the officials of the temple, it doesn't matter. It was what they were shouting. They were being swept along with the crowd. What is our shouts about Jesus? Are we proclaiming him in our lives and in our deeds? Are we shouting, Hosanna, because he is our saviour? He is the one who has saved us? Or are we kind of just drifting along with whatever society throws at us or whatever life is like? I've often wondered what this scene must have been like and you know I've had the opportunity twice now to walk that way of the palm from the top of the Mount of Olives right down through the Kidron Valley and up into Jerusalem. And the streets are narrow and they're very steep in places. It's quite rough terrain in other places. And if it was crowded at all it wouldn't take much to be pushing in from the sides of the road into the centre where the donkey would have been walking. There would have been lots of noise and lots of buzz. I wonder have you ever been to a sports event, a big sports event, or maybe even to a concert or something like that. You know, and, and just imagine the atmosphere that's in the stadium as the football team or the, for me, the rugby team runs out onto the pick, pitch or as a celebrity comes onto the stage. People are, are shouting and they're clapping and they're cheering and they're, they're so, so happy. I can imagine that must be what this was like a little bit. That sort of excitement and joy that's there. What is the excitement and the joy in our lives? What are we able to testify to? Our testimonies is the most important thing we have. But we only have a testimony if we're in a relationship with Jesus. We only are a follower of Christ if we know Christ. Not just know about him. I would imagine the vast majority of us knows the Palm, story, Palm Sunday story. The vast majority of us could probably even quote what was being shouted. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. A lot of us could rhyme that off. But do we really believe it for ourselves? Have we experienced the Hosanna, the saving power of God in our lives. And when people say to us, who is this? What is our response? Are we able to introduce them to our own Saviour? Are we able to introduce them to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? To the one who sat on a donkey? To the one who rode down into Jerusalem? To the one who five days later had to carry a cross through the narrow streets of Jerusalem to outside the city walls to a little hill called Golgotha where he was crucified as a criminal even though he was an innocent man and where three days later after he was buried, three days later, he rose again to eternal life. Are we able to testify to what he's doing in our lives? You see, whenever we ask Jesus into our hearts, whenever we ask him into our lives, when we ask him to save us, we become what the Apostle Paul describes as a new creation. The old is gone, 
the new has come. That new needs to shine through. We can't ask Jesus into our lives and then continue to live as we were living. We need to live as disciples for Christ. And our lives, our testimonies, will point other people to him. Because we are a new creation. And so when people say to us, who is this? Are we able to point them to Jesus? And we should be able to say, he is my saviour. He is my Messiah. He is my Lord. He is the one whom I am relying on to help me walk the path that will take me to heaven. The disciples obeyed without question. The donkey walked away from the top of the Mount of Olives right through Jerusalem. And the people praised and testified to what was happening at that time. We need to be like the disciples. We need to obey without question. We need to be like the donkey and we need to walk the way that Jesus calls us to walk. And we need to be like the people on this day, not like five days later. We need to be able to praise and testify to the goodness of God in our lives. Jesus did it for us. So we must live for him. And in this he gives us hope. He gives us certainty and he gives us assurance that when our time comes to leave this world, that we will go to be with him in his kingdom, in that place called heaven, in that new Jerusalem, where we will be able to praise him all the day long for all eternity. Be like a disciple. Be like the donkey. Be like the people who praise Jesus. And may God's name be praised in our lives. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word to us. We pray that you'd write it firmly on our hearts. We pray that you would help us to understand our need of a saviour. And that we would be able to obey all that you tell us. That we would be able to walk the way that you lead us. And that we would be able to proclaim what you're doing in our lives in praise and testimony. Lord, bless us this day and forevermore. For we pray this in your name. Amen. And may Christ draw you to himself. And grant that you find in his cross a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning for our time of worship. We hope that you've been blessed by it. And we're going to join together in the singing of the last two verses of our hymn for this morning, hymn 238, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. <laughs> 